God's word. His, his, his word is so amazing. I've noticed that the Lord has me ministering out of the uh, divisions of Psalms, and Psalms is so powerful. I would challenge you to read out of Psalms. In fact, today is the fifth. Uh, you could read out of the book of Luke. By the time it's the 24th, you're going to have a better understanding of Christ. So every day, today's the fifth, tomorrow the sixth, you know, and read a chapter out of Luke. You're going to have a greater understanding of Jesus and why he, why he came to earth. Psalms 57 and verse 1, if you find it, shall praise the Lord. should be on your screen for your convenience. It says, Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusts in thee. Yeah, yes, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge. Look what it says. Until these calamities be overpassed. Verse 2 says, I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performs all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. Say law. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. Verse 4. My soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp, a sharp sword. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pit before me in the midst whereof they are fallen themselves. Selah. I want to take my thought from verse 4 where David, the psalmist who is writing the song here, says, My soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. This morning's message we've entitled, The Lies of that follow the whys. Have you ever asked why before in your life? Have you ever asked God why? I'm sure that we've asked our children, why did you do this? I'm sure we've asked our spouse, why did you do that? And we've asked one another, but I know there's people in this room, you have questioned God and you've asked God why. And we're going to be talking about this subject today in this message we've entitled The Lies That Follow the Wise. Take your neighbor by the hand as a point of contact and a sign of unity and let's invade the holy throne room of God. Father, we love you. We're so thankful again to be in your house. We thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word. Let your word go forth in power and demonstration of your spirit, a powerful seed planted in good ground to bring forth much fruit. Holy Spirit, I'm so thankful that you're in this room. I felt you as soon as we walked in this sanctuary this morning. I know that you're with us. Continue to lead and guide and direct us. Bring all things back to our remembrance. Whatsoever has been spoken, whatsoever has been written, give us the insight for our eyesight. Open our ears that we may hear what you are saying to the church. And when we leave this place, we will bear much fruit. And we will continue to operate in your gifts. So confirm your word with signs and wonders. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody says, amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you for standing in reverence of the reading of God's word. I want to talk a little bit about us being among the lions. Um, there's no doubt that you and I as Christians, as believers, we are dwelling among people who want to do us harm are continuing to spread gossip, continuing to spread lies, or mendacious in so many areas to try to destroy or discredit even who we are as a person. And obviously they want to discredit the Word of God, which will never, ever happen. Aren't you grateful for the power of God's Word? But one common attack, and I want to, I really want to emphasize this this morning, that every person in this room, every Christian that is battling, we've been in the middle of doing a study called Every Christian's Battle, and uh, we've been talking about it on Wednesday nights and talking about um, uh, different things that we all battle. We battle in mental issues. Uh, we battle our faith. That was last Wednesday night, battle for belief. Uh, but one of the things that I know that you are battling, and collectively as a congregation, as the body of Christ, uh, we're all battling are the lies that are being told. There are people today who would just lie more than anything, right? They have a habit of just telling falsehood, telling stories, however you want to call it. But the, the bottom line is this. If you want to uncover what is actually happening here and just get specific, what's happening is there's an ongoing battle for the truth. 
And that's why people find it so easy to lie today, you know. And, and you have the narrative, you know, not only media, but you have officials in our government. You have a narrative that's been spread, that's been built upon nothing but lies. And it's, it's a battle for the truth. I want to know the truth. How about you? I think that's what, where the church needs to, to return. The church needs to return to the commandments, the statutes, the precept upon precept, the truth of God's word. What, that's what really matters to us today is the truth. I want to know the truth. And so this is the problem, though, because if we'll be honest and let's kind of circumvent what is going on in this nation among the church people, uh, is <laughs> believers are not equipped with the truth. They don't know the truth. They, they're quickly to accept something that's outside of the truth of God's Word, whether it is an abomination unto God, whether it goes against the very commandments of God, the Torah, which was the Ten Commandments that God had gave Moses, if it goes against it. And so people sometimes today, even the ordinary you know, everyday believer, many are not equipped with the truth of God's word. And let me tell you something. Before you can know the truth, you need to know where to find the truth. If you want to know the truth, you must go to the right source of the truth. Have you ever tried to chase down a lie before? Yes, all of us have. Have you ever tried to find somebody's story? You have a meeting with somebody, and I've refereed uh, I've been a mediator in a lot of these before, and it's not fun, but you have to kind of trace down where this began, and you want to find out where the truth is at. And so, but if you want to know the truth, you have to know where to find the truth. I'm glad today that Jesus says, I am the truth, I am the life, I am everything that we need him to be. Thank God for that. But look at the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 7. The apostle Paul writes to young Timothy here, and he says, there are a people today who are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Is that this uh, culture today? Is that society today? Yes, this is. Because there's a lot of people who are learning things, but they're not learning the truth. They may be good at you know, certain situations, good at certain skill sets, abilities, but what really matters, they're not learning, right? What really is going to become our sustenance, what is going to sustain our walk with God, many people are not equipped with that type of knowledge, the knowledge of the truth, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. More people are, are <laughs> would rather Google something, you know, a, a specific trend or a topic, a, a subject perhaps that the pastor's been preaching on. They would rather Google it and find out what somebody else has said and yet never open up God's Word to find out what God's Word said. Because if we could be honest, we maybe Google something and we'll look some a specific uh, something over a, some subject and we find out what somebody's opinion says about this without never really dividing the Word of God to find what the truth says. And so I believe that's the problem. We have come to this stage in society where people are never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Oh, you're learning, but they're learning things that really doesn't matter so much. And so this is the strategy. This is the strategy since the enemy, since Satan appeared to Adam and Eve as a snake and spoke with Eve. This has been his strategy to lie, to twist the words in a fashion where it sounds interesting. It sounds good, but it is not good. This is the strategy. The strategy is this. The enemy is attempting to cancel truth. Everywhere you go, the enemy is attempting to cancel truth. The strategy is stamped like this. Are you ready for this? Say, I'm ready. The strategy is stamped as misinformation. It's stamped as a misinformation movement. Or it's stamped as something that is fact-checked. 
You've seen it before throughout all social media. It's a misinformation movement. It's a fact-checking movement. And what is happening is if an element of truth goes against a liberal narrative, then that element of truth is canceled off of social media pages. It's canceled off of news outlets. It's canceled out of public schools. And it is even challenged in the courts. To the point where even God's word is becoming challenged in the courts. It's a shame. But why? Why is this happening? We're asking, you know, the wise that follow the lies, the lies that follow the wise, right? Why? Well, because the devil hates the truth. It's the bottom line. The devil cannot stand the truth. Satan hates the truth. And so as believers, we are among the lions. We must be aware of our surroundings. Not everyone that says, I'm a believer or I'm a Christian, not everyone is a believer and is a Christian. There are wolves who are in sheep's clothing. There are pastors who may look the apart and may assemble the congregation and all looks the part, but beneath the programs, beneath the suits, beneath the, um, the person, you find out that there's no fruit there. And there's a lot of junk that's going on in those churches today. And someone says, oh me. The devil hates the truth. He wants to cover up the truth. He will use lies to cover up the truth, whatever he can do. And so as Christians, we must be aware of what's happening in our world. This is what 1 Peter 5, verse 8 and 9 says. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seek him whom he may devour. And look at verse 9. It says, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So that simply means that everyone in this room is going through it. We are all vulnerable. We are all susceptible to the attack of the enemy. He wants to devour you. And he's looking for the most most vulnerable moment in your life. He's looking for the moment that you have put your shield of faith down. He's looking for the moment that you have taken off the helmet of salvation. He is especially looking for the moment where you've unbuckled the belt of truth and you've laid it aside and you've compromised your own standards because everybody else is compromising those standards. And he may leave you nothing, your your shoes that were shod with the preparation of peace. He He may catch you at a moment where you've laid everything down. Even the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, has been collecting dust on your shelf. And there you are, and Apostle Paul says, having done all to stand. And when that enemy comes in to fight against you, you've laid your weapons down, you've laid your armor down, and you want to know why Everything is going wrong in your life. And then the attack happens. And you're hurt. You're disappointed. You're discouraged. You're angry. You're mad. It's Your life turns from joy to rage. And then you begin to blame the church. Blame the people. Blame the wife. Blame the husband. Blame the job. When all of the, the blame belongs to you because you laid down the armor and the weapons that God told you to wear at all times. And then you want to know why. Why am I suffering? Why am I being tested? Why am I going through? Because you stopped in your tracks and you became a vulnerable person to the enemy and he has came into the circle of your life and he's attacked you at that vulnerable moment. And so today I challenge you to pick up the whole armor of God that you may withstand the evil one, that you may fight the good fight of faith. I challenge you today to get your life back centered upon the word of God and the ways of God and follow him and watch God become God in your life. Someone shout hallelujah. The devil's a liar. Notice it says we are to resist steadfast in faith. That really uh, last week when I was putting this together, that word resist steadfast 
that phrase stuck out to me. It stood out so powerful, so I wanted to research it. And in the Greek, the word for steadfast is the word babios, B E B A I O S, babios, and it means forceful, firm and more sure. And so I believe that God is calling us to have that type of babios faith, uh, steadfast faith in these last days. Uh, That simply means that you're going to need to put more time, you're going to need to put more energy uh, resisting the temptations of the enemy. Can I have an amen? I know today it's not exciting and I hear people say, I don't know why they use the word politic, political politics, political correct. I have no idea why that word is being chosen, be politically correct. I never could handle that. I think we should be biblically correct in everything. But nevertheless, it's not the jumping the pews type of message when you begin to tell people you must put some more energy and some more time into serving God. I realize that's not the most exciting thing because it's Christmas and we all want to talk about gifts and family and different things, right? But I'm telling you folks, the days are growing darker. Put more energy, put more time. How can we only attend church for an hour and a half a week and think that we are doing damage against the kingdom of darkness? God help us. This is what James chapter 4 and verse 7 says. It says, submit, someone shout submit. Submit yourselves therefore to God. And it says resist. Everyone say resist. Resist who? Your boss? Your wife? Your husband? Your children? Who's it say resist? Resist the devil. And what will happen when you resist the devil? He said, then invite him to come. Don't invite him. Don't play with fire because if you continue to play with fire, you will be burned. He says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. And a lot of people today are, are complaining how the devil is riding their back every week. Oh, the devil's doing this and the devil's doing that. It's like you've put a saddle on your back for the devil to ride on. Why are we doing this when the Bible tells us in Scripture to resist him and he will flee? I'm looking for an ambassador of Christ that says greater is he that's been in me than he that's in the world. I'm looking for a valiant man and valiant woman of God that's going to stand in the face of adversity and say no. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm looking for somebody that says enough's enough. We are the head and not the tail. We are are, are overcomers through the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We are made more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. And I don't have to take the junk that the devil has been throwing at me. I resist him and rebuke him in the name of Jesus. And he shall flee. Even the word says seven different ways. Someone shout hallelujah. Psalms division 57 and verse 4. The psalmist writes this, and this is interesting here. He says, my soul is among lions, and I lie, sleep, even among them that are set on fire. Even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. You better be careful what your mouth says. You better get your tongue off people. For with that judgment that you speak, that judgment will return to you. Jesus said that, not Pastor JC. So you better watch what you're saying. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. We are living among the lions. We are lying among the lions, among those that want to destroy us with the words of 